In this Torah portion, the word is ki tisa. When you elevate or uh, something, or when you take something. And that's in Exodus 30, and it starts in verse 11, and it says, And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, When you take it the sum of the children of Israel after their number, then shall they give every man a ransom for his soul unto the Lord. And thou numbereth them that there be no plague among them when thou numberest them. This was ransom money from the people to service the tabernacle. He paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. So now I sing a brand new song. Amazing grace. Christ Jesus paid a debt. That I could never pay. And our Lord and Savior fulfilled this part of scripture and he paid it in full. Exodus 31 verse 1. Complete Jewish Bible. Now the Lord said to Moses, I have singled out Bethzeel, the son of Uri, and the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God, Spirit of wisdom, of understanding, and of, of knowledge concerning every kind of artistry. And I want to talk a little bit about the Spirit of the Lord. It has many names in, throughout the entire Bible. The Holy Spirit. And in 2 Kings 2 and 9, it says, And it came to pass when they were gone over, Elijah and Elijah, after Elijah parted the Jordan, uh, Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elijah said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. This same spirit is on God's people today, the spirit of Elijah. On the other side of this, we see in 1 Samuel chapter 16, I'm going to start at verse 13, when Samuel took uh, oil and anointed David as king, and the Spirit of the, of the Lord came upon him from that day forward. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and the evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. You and I serve a terrible God. There's nothing more frightening than he. By, the, by his grace, we only see a glimpse of his terror. In James 2.19, the devils tremble because of Yah. This same spirit is upon people today. Elijah preached to the northern kingdom. After King Solomon died, Rehoboam and Jeroboam, his sons, split the kingdom because of taxation. The king who ruled uh, in the northern kingdom, was a his name was Ahab. And Asa ruled the southern kingdom. King Ahab was married to a princess of Baal named Jezebel. And she had 450 priests under her. Now we can see that idolatry was a sin that the people uh, in the Old and New Testament submitted themselves to. Idolatry is alive even today. 
I remember when the pastor gave a study a while back on the on the Antichrist and how he is not a a one person, but a large group of people. And he proved that through scripture that that the spirit of Antichrist was in that large group of people. I want to go quickly back to Exodus 31, verse 13, a verse that should be mentioned. It says, now, I'm going to go 12. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, verse 13, Speak thou unto, also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily, my Sabbath ye shall keep, for it is a sign between you and, and me, and you throughout your generation, that you may know that I am the Lord that sanctifies you. Exodus 32, verse 1. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, plural which should go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us out of the land of Egypt, we don't know what has become of him. This, this large group of people broke the second commandment. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth, thou shalt not, not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. Yah delivered them from the land of Egypt. All the glory and honor goes to our wonderful Yah. Moses, Moses was working under his authority. All came out of Egypt, including Moses. This large group of people wanted to replace Moses and make an image to symbolize God in heaven to go before them. Verse 7 in the complete Jewish Bible, it says, The Lord said to Moses, Go down, hurry, your people whom you brought up from the land of Egypt have become corrupt. So quickly they have turned aside from the way I ordered them to follow. They have cast a metal statue of a calf, worshipped it, sacrificed to it, and said, Israel, here is your God who brought you out from the land of Egypt. The Lord continues speaking to Moses. I have been watching these people, and you can see how stiff-necked they are now leave me alone so they may so my anger can be can blaze against them and i will put an end to them and i will make a great nation out of you instead and moses plead with the lord his god he said lord why must your anger blaze against your own people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and a strong hand. Now our Jesus, who sits at the right hand of the Father, intercedes the same way for his people that the Father has given him. Why let the Egyptians say it was with evil intentions that he led them out to slaughter them in the hills and wipe them off the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce anger. Relent. Don't bring the disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, your servants to whom you swore by your very self. You promised them, I will make your descendants as many as the stars in the sky, and I will give all this land I have spoken about to your descendants, and they will possess it forever. And Adonai, our Lord, 
then changed his mind after about the disaster he had planned for his people. And Moses turned and went down from the mountain with two tablets of the testimonies in his hand. Tablets inscribed on both sides, on the front and on the back. Now before Moses can give them the Torah, these people needed to repent. With idol worship comes immoral behavior. Now what Moses did was take that idol and pound it into a dust. And he took it and add water, that dust and put water in it and made them to drink. Now in Numbers chapter 5, when the spirit of jealousy came upon a man and he is jealous of his wife, she is set before the Lord and the priest gave her a bitter drink and to see if she would, had defiled herself with another man. In this, Moses demonstrated to the people that it is a personal relationship that they must have with Yah. Bending the knee to any other will make them harlots. 3,000 people died that day. In the New Testament, Herod, Herod was king in Rome when John the Baptist was calling people out, of repent, uh, out to repent from living in the false religion and to come back to God and be holy through his Torah. And John told him that he violated the Torah because he married his brother's wife and she hated him and she was an idol worshiper in first kings chapter 18 verse 17 in the complete jewish bible it says when ahab saw elijah ahab said to him is it really you you trouble of israel and he answered i haven't troubled israel you have, you in your father's house, by abandoning the Lord's Torah and following Baal. And Elijah answered, Now order all Israel to assemble before me on Mount Carmel, along with the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of the grove, who eat at Jezebel's table. Elijah proved that God is God alone, and Jezebel hated him for it. Now, Elijah and John the Baptist are saying the same thing. And in Deuteronomy 17, it, tell, it speaks about how wicked the um, idol worship is. And in verse 6, it says, At the mouth of two witnesses... If they, he or she is worthy of death. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Paul talks on what we should do when confronted with a person that is weak in the faith. Here, the example is food. And Paul makes it clear what our obligations as priests are. We are examples of the light. It is our responsibility to give help and clarity on the subject of what is acceptable to Yah to the best of our ability. All things are permissible, but all things do not build the church. We are responsible to love Agape love. In Chorus, idol worship was big. The food that was worshipped to idols were sold in the marketplace. In idol worship, always, almost always, 
there were immoral behavior. Here, Paul is writing to the new believers who came out of a false religious system that they grew up in and surrounded them. Today, folks have freedom to do all things, but believers have a responsibility to do what is best to increase unity in the walk of faith. Knowledge pops up, but love builds up. Ki tisa to elevate.